everybody I'm Jerome Wright here once again and um, once again you're joining me on my Jerome Wright YouTube channel here on YouTube okay I'm gonna be back here and um, with the um, with the tomb lid of um, Mayan leader Mayan King Lord Pakal. Um the reason why I'm back here with this image is because I uh, I got a um, a comment on my YouTube video of this I do and by the way people I do have a video out already on this and um, of course every once in a while people disagree with me and I, I mean this is what this is all about and um, they stated that I was wrong but actually basically what it does is that when people challenge me in mindset like that normally every once in a while occasionally I'll go back and um, and, and, and look at my editor calls for me to look at my image or if I run across it again while I'm researching other work I'll look at it again in the in the in an adverse way meaning I'll step away from what I have already found and come back and you know and say hey you know what let me take another look at it and challenge myself and um I always end up getting the same results I end up proving more of myself than actually um, disproving myself but I always look at myself in that way um, this image here of this um, this tomb lid has became very popular because um ancient alien theorists um, headed off by um I guess it's Eric van Daniken um, describes this tomb lid as a space device as a capsule and a flight device where um, Lord Picard here is seen so, shown seated is flying off you know what I mean and he's working all of these contractions this that and the third and um but the only thing that I see here is I see a king seated in his throne laying back as if you were imagining somebody being fed cherries Caesar or somebody and they're being fed cherries but this is definitely a, th a throne if this man turned around and put his feet here in the front you would see that this is a seat that this man is seated in like a throne okay um, and this is what this is this is suggesting to me now with him laying back like that and things going in his nose this that and the third I realize that it is his throne but he's showing you that through the already created genetics Meaning, his throne represents his people. It re represents the, the, the kings and the leaders before him. So therefore, by him laying in the throne the way he is, because it's telling us that he's saying, you know what? <clears throat> Through my throne, I genetically altered my people, and this is by the way that I've done it. Based on me picking up, <coughs> excuse me, based on me picking up where my leaders before me, which is described by the throne, have created before me and I and I taken them to another level and this is what he's stating so I mean it's, it's just that that simple cut clear and dry people that's it now what is he st stating well by him laying back this creates a cross right here I'm the first person that ever told you that the cross means the cross referencing of mankind's being genetics with that of man and with that of animal where's the animal there's an animal right there at the top of the cross. This is almost like the mascot of the Mayan people. You see a bird up there. The bird is a representation of all previous creatures based on that with the dinosaur. These genetics. At this point, Lord Pakal is a representation of those genetics from our, of our what creature and ancestor? That of our ape. It's about genetic bridging people and genetic change. That is all that is describing in all of our ancient art, our ancient glyphs. Everything is describing the same exact thing. How that culture, how that civilization contributed to the genetic change of their people. All right. <clears throat> we have the cross here. All right. So now. This, what is this here being described as? Well, this is a serpent. This you bet over this is a serpent. The other head of the serpent is here with identifiable, um, with an, um, with identifiable being in its mouth uh, as a mother creation. And it's a two-headed serpent. And the other bend comes over here with its mouth open. And we have another serpent here. So we have a, 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 a description of our land creature and 
our serpent creature, which represents that of our reptile, our reptilian. Okay? I mean, everything that I've been stating here all along. Cross-contamination of mankind's being with that of animal kind. And it's giving description of those creatures at the at the at the top of the cross, at the cross of the cross, and at the base of the cross. So it shows you cross-referencing. I mean, just that simple. Now, I'm going to bring the image in closer because I want to show you some, and then I'm going to get. I'm coming back to um, something on Van Daniken too because that person inquiry helped me bring bring um. Let me see where we're at here. Can we see? Okay, yes, right there. I'm going to come to the other side. People, first of all, let me state that these images, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> these images are not meant to be looked at in a regular sense. Think with me for a minute, okay? Think with me. These images were created by beings, or these, these creations, these creations, these images, these structures, the lid, are created by beings that did not have the same, ah, the, the same mindset as those of up today, or the same vision, the sense of vision that we have today. These beings that created this lid were back at a time when they were closer on that evolutionary scale where there were their visions, their thoughts were more geared to the sense of being that of our animal ancestors from which we evolved through. Now, take that and give them the genetics from these creatures, from reptiles and from these birds, all of these genetics, which can be identified in our bodies today because we have all of these genetic strands in our bodies today. I think they said like 190 that we have in our body that we don't even use. Now, imagine all of these senses, these keener senses from these creatures, which was introduced into the bloodstream uh, of mankind and into the semen streams of mankind, into the saliva streams of mankind, all of these genetics into our body. And this is why you have such creations, because they're not created through the minds of what we have today, but they were created through the minds of what we had yesterday, times, God knows, three or four hundred of other creatures that we have been introduced to to change our genetic identity. Now, there's always, when you see something like this here, we all know that we came from ape. You start looking, these, these, these things, you have to look at this, and this was never designed to be looked at head up, meaning direct on. You have to look at this in a multi-dimensional sense. Again, these images mirrored or lay over, do overlayments, create other images. You know why? Because that's what they were created for, the way in the way to be created, like almost like motion pictures. You have to move the image in order to produce the images that are really being shown. But in this case, I already have my multi-dimensional sense of awareness. So I can go to this and point things out about this for you right here on my big screen, as I call it. And I'm going from my laptop to my big screen. But it's all about the genetic change where animals broke down the we already have the image of mankind all you have to do is look for the image of the ape and you look for the image of the woman okay now can i bring this in even more yet i'm gonna bring this up uh where we at here let me put my finger up here i went off the screen by doing that so let me let me come back I'm going to give you an ape image real quick on here. And I'm going to give you my mother of creation image. Um, I should, this pencil does not have a tip on it. No, it's okay. People, look right here. See that? 
helmet-like figure with a point on the top of it. There's an eye socket. There's a forehead there. There's an eye socket. There's an eye socket. There's the nostril. There's a nostril. There's a lip. And there's a lip. This is a full face figure of that of an ape. And I'm going to come in closer so you can see that. I'm going to come up, come up. And I'm going to make sure that I'm on it. I'm trying to look back at the screen. Uh, I just want to make sure that you guys can see this. I'm on my timer here, so I'm moving you around. Right. Let me see. There's the bottom lip. There's the mouth line. Here's the top lip. There's the nostril. There's the nostril. Here's the cheek area. There's an eye socket there. There's an eye socket. There's that familiar look of our ape right there. You see that? You see that ape face right there, people? Right there. Now, this is on the head side of Lord Pakal and it's in the bend of this serpent's mouth here open. This is the open mouth of a serpent. So on the top lip portion of the serpent's mouth, that's open. Right there, you will find it. Now, you have to go to original looking images of that. You know you have a bunch of um, replicas and this, that, and the third of that tomb lid. And this is pretty much the most identifying um, um, image that I've actually found to date of this, I would imagine. Uh, but you can go to the actual tomb lid. You, you notice that you can't get the authentic almost tomb lid. There are some that are right over top, but you have to get images that are revealing and compelling like this here. Okay, so therefore, this is about the closest to the original that I've actually discovered yet. But this is to give you some kind of idea of what is there. All right. Look at this, an ape's face. Now, always wherever the ape is, there's the, the image of a woman, the mother of creation. Right next to the ape is right there is the mother of creation. There's her drooping chin. There's her mouth. Here's these like reptilian-like um, antennae coming across off of her lip. There's a cheekbone. There's a cheekbone. There's her eye. There's her eye, here's her nose, here's her forehead area here, and there are two images that are consistently being found in all of my discoveries that I have, right there. Now, there's something else, and that's a new discovery of mine, I don't know if I, yeah, I don't think I mentioned that anywhere else before, but this is an ape image. Now I'm going to take you to something else. I have another new discovery that I want to take you about this and, and tell you because I want to show you how this is all readable and for what it is. All you have to know is that, I mean, we came from the ape. These people know it and therefore they implicate it on how they genetically altered themselves. It's a record. It's a cape I mean, a, a keepsake record, people. It's a moral of how there was genetic change. Now I'm going to see if I can pull this back. Oh yeah, you can see that ape pretty good. I'm going to bring it here because this I see a clear image over here. I'm going to go through that one more time. There's the bottom lip of the ape. There's the ape's mouth line. There's the ape's nostrils. There's the ape's cheek. There's the ape's eye socket, eye socket, forehead. And it's almost wearing a helmet with a point on the top. Isn't that amazing? Right here. Now, here, again, is the mother of creation, chin, Mouth, almost like antennae coming off the side of her face, nose, eye, eye, and you know what, people? I'm sitting up here calling this up. You know what the hell she's wearing? Let me bring that in. You know what the hell? I'm sitting here looking at it now. You know what? He's the ape is wearing a crown with a point on it, and symbolizing king. This woman here is wearing a crown. Can you, if you can follow my pencil here, there's a point of the, it's a round crown, a dome, and then it has one point here, one point there, one point there, one point here, one point there. This, she's wearing a queen's crown. Let me come in here closer to this. Oh my goodness. 
What in the world is going? It doesn't get no sweeter than this. What? Let me see where that ape and stuff is at, right? Right here. Oh, damn it. I'm off the... Uh, let me see if I can bring that. I'm going to hold on. I'm going to I'm gonna go larger with this and bring that in. I want you guys to see this. It doesn't get no sweeter and better than this. Here I thought I was just giving you something. Okay, we got our zoom. I know it's going to go zoom. It's going to, oh gosh. It always goes up to a point to where I have no control of it. Uh, let me see if I can. It always zooms in. Okay, I'm going to go with that, that larger image. I got, I lost out on my pixels here, people, but you still might be able to see it. And let me see. Let me see, right? Oh, gosh. You still might be able to realize it. I'm going to turn it over and then I'm going to go back to the smaller size, people. I apologize. I just want to give you that. Uh, where we at? Okay, I still got to go back. I'm gonna give it to you. I'm gonna give it to you, Lars. Hold on. Okay, there you go. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna give it to you, Large. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. This is this is going to be good. This is going to be good, people. It doesn't get no better than this. It does. Well, yes, it does. With me, it does. Here she is. Here. Well, here's the ape. First of all. There's the bottom lip of the ape, there's the mouth of the ape, there's the nostril, there's the eye socket, there's the eye socket, and the ape is wearing a spiked throne, I mean, I'm not a throne, a uh, crown, and here's the woman's face here, okay, distinct um, chin, mouth, jaw lines, nose, eye, eye, and here's a crown. Now I'm gonna bring it back down to that. See if I stay right in that same location without losing none of it. And the only thing is this. Well, well, you no, know, that won't work. This thing doesn't let me for whatever reason. I can't go down. It's either it's either all the way up or all the way down, and I can't get. All right. So let me try this out. Let me see where I can put you at right there. Oh, there you go, right there. Okay, you should be able to. All right, there they go, right there. And I'm gonna bring you in as close as possible without. All right, I'm gonna keep it right there. I can't do no closer than that. Again. There's an ape face. There's the forehead. The ape is wearing a spiked crown, like a scully cap and a point on it. There's the eye. There's the eye. There's the nose. There's the mouth right there. Right next to it, eye, eye. There's a being. There's a crown, a dome. There's one point. There's a point. There's a point. There's a point. And there's a point. Here's the band for the crown. Here's an eye. There's an eye. There's a nose. There's a mouth. There's the chin, and it has these reptilian-like antennae coming off of each mouth there. So you have a king and a queen, and the king is an ape, and the queen is right there. Amazing, isn't it? Look at the closest images that you have to the Lord Pakal tomblet. Don't go Googling the ones that... Um, the ones that actually have the um, the remakes, in other words. Now, I'm going to take you to something else. I'm going to take you away from there. That, that's, that was amazing for me, to be totally honest with you. Yeah, But it's always consistent and self-verifying with my other discoveries. Now, I'm going to take you to... Um, let's go to Lord Pakal's hand. Because that was a big thing, a pointer feature for Eric Van Daniken in his ancient alien thing. So, I'm going to go, I don't want to go up to the hand right here. 
right? It's right there. I don't know what you can see. All right. Eric Van Daniken, yeah, there it is there. Eric Van Daniken says, states that he's sitting in his apparatus. And, oh, by the way, Eric Van Daniken calls this a spaceship or space device or a space vessel for flight. It looks more like a time machine to me. But um, anyway, I'm calling it a genetic altering device. which actually, and it is a time machine because if you look at it in different dimensions, it produces the dimensional images, not just for Lord Pakal's time, but it creates the images of the mutations or the genetic manipulations. It projects images of what they would futuristically look like, in other words. So if you take, mirror this image, or do overlayments, other images are produced. And that's the ability that our ancestors had and the knowledge and the technology that they had an understanding to do these images are these creations. Now, let's go here. The hand. Let me take, I don't want to keep putting my pencil up here. I'm going to have marks all over my screen here. You see this here, the hand? Eric Van Daniken tells you that Pakal is turning a knob of some sort and he's going to take off. He's going to fly out of from where he's at. He has a lot of people believing that bullshit. I see people, even indigenous people of Mexico, and little kids I see on this show talking about, they educating them that the, the little boy, I sat there with son that the little boy was talking about what Lord Pakal was doing and what his hands was doing. Change the mindset of the people that are right there in, in Mexico. Stunning, it really is. But see, people like Van Daniken, people like Scott Walter, People like um, 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 Brad, um, Brad, whatever is um, Scott Walter, Brad, um, something from Decoded. I mean, these people are so famous and became so famous. You know why? Because they are implants which are steering you away from reality. You know, we're in a time where religion is losing its chokehold on people. Science has no credibility because of all of these new artifacts is, is being found and disproving science. Things that science has already been established, has been challenged and have been proven wrong. So we're not believing in that. We're losing faith in that. So now we have this boom of theorists that emerge. And have you looking to the stars and aliens and all these abnormal possibilities of where mankind evolved from. Misteachings, I'm telling you, that they are. And they're becoming very popular. But it's all bullshit. These were the best teachers that we ever had for reality of who we are. This is the reason why, people, I can show you in your face using our own ancestral antiquities and show you that this is reality and everything that we were taught to believe reality is mostly in part bullshit. Lord Pakal's hand, Van Daniken, one of them here, is actually creates the hand of a serpent. That's one. This is the head of a serpent, shown coming out of Lord Pakal. That's the that's the I believe his would be his left arm and hand. So that creates the head of this concoction of genetics that was created. 
So what is his right hand doing? Well, it's right there in your face. The right hand is not turning a knob, a, a knob of some sort. The right hand creates the beard and the mustache portion of a man's mouth and face. There's the man's nose. That contraption is shown going into Lord Pakal's nose creates the eye, the um, the eye area, the shadow overshadow, and there is a face in front of Lord Pakal with almost a purple like tiara on. In this blank space, I'm going to turn it up so you can see. Now, out of Lord Pakal's head, again, is a worm, snake-like creature there, and also on the tiara of this popal like figure is the same exact thing. So Lord Pakal has not one but two heads and if you look at it dimensionally there's other things that can be realized here. Now I'm gonna go to the next image and show you where's my image of Lord Pakal? Hold on we don't want to go there we're gonna go where is my image of Lord Pakal? Oh, is that? The... Why do I not have Lord Pakal? Or is it? Why? What is going on here? Or maybe. What is going on? I should have, unless I put both images, I'm going to click out of, oh, you know what happened? Oh, silly me, silly me, silly me. I did not bring over the image of Lord Pakal seated up. Damn, 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 damn. Well, this is seated up, but I have the image spun around and I can't do it here. All right. I can't do it here. I normally would could download it on my other computer and, um, and re-upload it and turn it. But this computer here, for whatever reason, it keeps telling me that there are viruses in my mailbox and it won't let me do it. So it's not blocking it, so it keeps recognizing viruses. So I'm not pushing it on this. All right. On this, um, on, on one of my laptops, I got two here. So, um, but people, imagine with me. I'm sure that you can see. I'm going to come in closer. It looks even better when you. All right, we're here. Lord Pagal hand. The bottom part where it connects to the wrist right there creates the bearded chin. Of a figure, a Merlin like figure. The way Lord, Th um, Lord Pakal thumb comes up, it creates the facial hair of the front portion of the chin. Lord Pakal hands coming up and wrapping around creates the hair that comes up around the side and over top to create the mustache of a bearded man. Lord Pakal thumb and finger portions meeting creates the mouth slit of the man this portion here of this I don't know what in the world is in there but there's a shadow right there that creates the nostril of the man you can even see the wrinkle let me bring this in closer because you can see the wrinkles under the eyes of this guy and everything else so I'm going to come in as close as possible here and make sure that okay yes there's Lord Pakal's hand creates the mouth. There's the slit of the man. His hand emula or, or simulates that that being hair creates a bearded man. Here's the cheek and chin line area of that man. Here's the man's nose. I'm at his tip. There's a shadow created that creates the nostril of the man. We come up. Before we get to that contraption going into Lord Pakal's nose, you see how that creates the shadow? It creates the eye slit of the man. 
And then even look down here, you can even see the underlying wrinkles under the man's eyes, that little puffy area under the man's eyes. This is an entire area that creates a face in front of Lord Pakal's face. Here's the Lord Pakal's face here. Another whole entire head, underlining chin area, and the whole nine. And if you look closer, there are other multidimensional images that can be realized along with Lord Pakal, coming off his shoulder area, coming off the front portion area, and consistent with those of reptiles and serpents. And the fact coming off his back right here is the head of almost like a, what you would look at be called a mono lizard here, mouth, bottom lip, nose area, eye, all on this, like Lord Pakal is cloaked in the genetics of these creatures. Can you see that, people? Oh, yeah, you can see that. I can see it from here. All right, so you're still with me. People, this popal like tiara here shows, well, let me go to Lord Pakal because his headdress here shows a serpent right there, bent back. There's the head, there's the mouth area. Then that popal like tiara coming across. You know what it reminds me of? As, as, as a kid, the first time I seen one of the tiara images, it reminds me of when I used to watch Fred Flintstone. And um, Fred Flintstone had that hat on when every time he went to the um, the, lo the loyal order of water buffaloes. And this tiara is my first image of re reminder or that is reminiscent of that time. And the second is with that, of course, of being that with the Pope. And these tiaras, if you notice, have that uncanny look. And where do we find these images at? We find them with royalty. And we find them with ancient rooted religion. You see this? Now, amazingly enough, who did who commissioned all the earlier on explorations of our world? Ancient rooted royalty and ancient rooted religion. People, this is an eerie reminder that what is right before your face here is right before your face today. And the guilty parties of taking and distorting these messages, these ancient rooted symbolizations and messages that was left behind by our ancestors for everyone to have and understand, it discloses to you that those that are deceiving us today are the very ones that went around globally, stole our ancient history and knowledge, and what they couldn't carry away, steal, they destroyed it. So they could come back and distort the message of reality, which they now have, bottle it up and commercialize it back to you, make money off of it while they're doing it, have your mind imprisoned, have you physically have you mentally imprisoned, physically imprisoned. And all along while they're committing a global genocide on all mankind being by connect, contaminating the genetic being of mankind. Did that make sense to you? People, this is not designed to be looked at in the sense that we look at it. This is designed to look at it through the understanding and the mind and the visions, the keener vision of our ancient rooted ancestors that had probably, possibly a higher IQ. In fact, I'm going to say, yes, a higher IQ than ours. You know why? Because all of the creatures that genetically contributed to them and their genetic becoming at that point 
had a better understanding than us. And in totality, you take all of those creatures in that cauldron like cocktail and put that understanding, that extinctive knowledge into the minds of such leaders like Lord McCall. And in my mind, those minds were probably the best minds that our world has possibly ever had. You get people to come along afterwards like Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, and all these people that never really had the understanding to begin with because they're just regular human beings just like us. But at some point in their time, the exposure that they had, they realized reality was in this stuff and they took it to the next level. But, you know, they had help because their mentors had this knowledge. The, the schools of the mentors had this knowledge and their affiliations had this knowledge. Their affiliations meaning that through ancient rooted religion and ancient rooted royalty, families, cousins, brothers, sisters, uncles, dads, they all that was exposed to this knowledge that they had it was a pass down to the minds of like Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, Bernini, Rembrandt. You start looking at the chain of command of, of these people, lives, and it all comes back to the same individuals that stole this stuff from our ancient ancestors. It's a cycle that comes back full circle on itself and the guilty parties are the ones that you worship today. My name is Jerome Wright. You're watching my Jerome Wright YouTube channel. And I will continue to bring videos like this. Now, and another thing about this is the resolution. When you look at this, oh, hold on. I'm about ready to go away. What in the world am I talking about? When you bring this image in and out, Look at the resolution of it because through each, you know what I like to call it when you do, when you go from larger to smaller in thumbnail size and then, and then bring it slowly up. You know what I like to call that? Not resolution. I like to call it dimensional, um, dimensions because each dimension that you look at this image in creates another opening and another image in the way that this is supposed to be looked at and be viewed. Look at a cat size or look at a, um, the pupils of these animals. Of lizards, how they go from larger to smaller. You know why they adjust like that? Because they're telescopes <laughs> that allow... That's what you got to look at this in a dimensional telescope. Because it allows you to see reality. And reality is that we genetically evolved through these creatures so you use you don't have this ability of our lizard ancestor now or our dinosaur ancestor now or then and again you do but we have devices in place that allows for us to use that ability manually through the technology and electronics that we have you do that with this image and it allows you to see the way that they saw when they created this. Now, I'm going to go to the next image and you go from a taller, I mean, smaller resolution to the, to the larger resolution. And okay, here's another image. And this was, I liked it, this one. I did a video on this too with Lord Bacall. And this is supposed to be with our, um, uh, it's supposed to be um, Mayan soccer ball. And as you see people, I see images and I even in this stuff. And I actually, you see my doodlings on the, on here. And um, even even the stains up here, I, I mean, I see things. And I'll, and I'll explain why that is later. But for now, what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to show you. And here you probably see faces that I drew down. You see that face there? I, that I drew there on the leg. You see that 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 face there that I drew on that leg on that. You see it there. I even gave the guy a mustache. No, look at this. Chin, mouth. You see that? 
And then here's a mother of creation back there created by a hand. You see that there? Let me come around to the other side. I'm going to make a point here, people, before I end this video. How many minutes did I go into this? Because I pulled. All right, I can actually agree, click out of this. But this is the, uh, what I want to make the, um, what's come up. When you look at these images, look at them for what they truly are. Now, you know damn well that this is bizarre like that. But this is the same thing that Lord Pecan has, this bird up on his head. So it's saying that, I mean, I'm genetically bridged over. And if you look closely, you will see signs of how they genetically altered themselves. And eventually it's telling you that even, even remember I told you about the hand, one of Lord Pecan's hands had a, a lizard, I mean, a, a serpent on it, on that, and then um, on his lid. Well, look here, this guy's hand creates that same exact hand of a serpent you see that look even the eye look and everything everything is created to create a head of a serpent now you come over here on this back side and you see the face of a darker skinned brown man you see the mother of creation here okay you see the brown face of this Mayan um, figure here, but what you don't see is on the back, what this creates people, you know what this is showing you? From the, there's a cloaked monkey in here. Now I'm gonna show you the, the cloaked monkey. It's showing you a separation of those monkey genes, these genes, and this is what this is all about, bridging over, and it's caused for by that of that boat bird figure. It's an intervention that they're telling you. It's a cocktail. Now, this here is the fur, creates the fur of a monkey. The monkey, this man is carrying a double-headed face. The monkey is in the back shown encrypted in his hair. Now, it's amazing because, you know, Leonardo da Vinci, a lot of our Renaissance artists utilize the hair to encrypt Beings that genetically altered man's kind beings from that of what their ape ancestor. So this guy at this point is telling you that he's half and half and he's showing you what he's half and half with. It's telling you at this point who this mind figure genetically is at this point showing you that almost in the sense of being half ape and half black at that time. He's telling you that he's separating himself from that of the ape. Well, actually, he is being, uh, he's stating that he is being black, but along the lines back then of being like what we would consider that of ape and African. This is what this guy is telling you. He's telling you that there is a genetic breakdown chemistry in his body and it's shown throughout encryptions that is in the painting. Now, let's come over here to this other guy. Now, He's tearing away from the monkey in sense. So look at his body. Imagine him having a monkey suit on, which this is seemingly is. And look, he's tearing away from the monkey suit and his face is coming out. So his face is split double sided and his hair is showing you the monkey genetics. Amazing, isn't it? Now let's go back over to here to this figure because he looks like he's a higher up figure here. And if you go, and then this is an image that you can Google people and um, you can download for yourself. It's a very popular image. I guess I Google, normally I Google um, Mayan soccer ball. Um, again, we have this bird on the head. Now, people, the bird is a representation of the dinosaur. There's other things, too. If you look in here, there's faces and, 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 um, and um, encryptions here, by the way. But... Again, here we have this man. Again, if you look at the hand here, can you see the hand? There is a similar figure that looks similar to what is here. Okay, now, but look look at the way his headdress is created. Now, I've highlighted, you probably see it now. You, you probably see it at this point. Shows you this bird. 
and it shows you an extraction. It shows you the bird is bridged over with the ape. And this leader is between that concoction. You don't see it, do you? Oh, well, here on the back side of the bird, which makes it a dual head figure, there's the band showing you the band of the genetics of the bird, which is that of you would consider a bird's semen and blood. Look, going into the mouth of an ape figure, which I got to get you in close on that. Let me get you in there close on that. Now, I'm, I don't know if you're seeing this because I have my timer up here. And the reason why I keep adjusting it is because it's hard for me to say. But I have to do it like this, people. I don't know if you can see this. Um, Let me see. I might be off. Well, all right. Then you might be able to see it better. Well, if you Google this image, pan in on this, stare right there at just this black portion on the back of this headdress. And on the back of that headdress, you will see the cranial at the top of an ape, the wrinkles in the ape's forehead, the eye, the eye, and the mouth. And you would notice that the band that this bird and this ape, genetic strands, people, genetic strands coming and merging into the open mouth of an ape. Bird, ape, representation of our dinosaur, reptilian, ape, and this king figure stating you that he's wearing the genetics Contaminated genetics of these beings would cause for the genetic altering or change in his people. People, these, these bizarre and unusual illustrations can be read if you understand what they are. Pretty much the pictures are even more better than the text. Because they tell you the truth. Those that have been reading and breaking down the text to you has been lying to you, distorting the truth. Here's reality. See, the universal language of anywhere that you go, whether it may be in our world or any other world, may it be previous or present, the universal language in everything is sight, vision. To understand what is being shown here in vision is the understanding is all that you need. Screw the text. You can read what is being stated here. Anybody can read this. But what then happened is you have a group of people that were hell bent on deceiving you and blocking you from seeing reality. So they give you a game of soccer to distort you. When this guy is telling you that he is moving the ball of genetics, they are balancing the ball of genetics. Those genetics being black genetics, meaning coming from that of our ape ancestor and there's an ape in, in this man's um, 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 I, I'm this, this, this leader's headdressing here with the bird and then you have it shown here in the hair an ape and the darker skin versions of our ancestors of our Mayan ancestors now this would later come on to be become the headdress of Indians wearing bird feathers now i was just telling someone how many minutes do i got here i'm into this 49 minutes i might as well go ahead and run this out i might as well go ahead and beat the hour up on this well i thought i was going to be able to keep it down under half an hour and that looks like that ain't going to happen but um you know what gets me about all this i was just telling um a, um a friend of mine when talking about 
these feathers and these wings and stuff. You know, before we got to our modern day religion, our religion as we know it, even ancient rooted religion, and people having wings, well, before that, the reality has it that there were flying serpents in um, our ancient Japan and ancient Asian history. And, um, and these, these, these animals had wings. These prehistoric creatures had wings, right? Yeah, there was no people with wings. Now, in fact, I even seen in one that my other friend has sent me an image of ancient Egyptian, and there were these two people on the on, on levels of on these um I'm um, like pyramid levels on each other, and their clothing almost seemed like created the atmosphere of people having wings, but it was actually in that of the form of clothing. And their clothing actually almost created the wings on their back. Literally. And I, that was the first time that I've seen an image of people being close to having wings. It wasn't until we got into um, that of religion with the Romans, the Greeks, where these angelic-like figures started coming in and shown being descended from the sky with these wings on their back. But everything else before that shows that dinosaurs, lizards, reptilians, even snakes with wings were the, were the, were the, were the flying creatures of choice that had wings. Now, after that became these gothic-like creatures where we went through the transition of the next being with wings were that of like gargoyles or demonic like figures that were flying but yet we still didn't have no people with wings and then there was this amazing transition to where they started talking about fallen angels and these beings having wings and then people all of a sudden people figures started having wings but before all of that the wings were still with the birds and this is how they were shown being worn so the, 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 the conclusion that I'm coming to with this people is that the history of angels which I actually know the history of aliens which I know and these divine like beings which I know that it can be traced back to the origins of where they originated from if you paid attention to what is truly being said to you in these images you have to cut out that third party that misinforming third party from reality you take that person that's been lying to you all along. Take that chemistry out of your head. Go back and look at the images yourself. And the reality in them are there. They're motion pictures, people, that tell you the truth. To look at this stuff in any other way, it undermines the common sense that you were given and understanding to understand this to begin with. For you to be led to believe that this is myth and this is not reality and they were well, not this here but I'm talking about the mythical beings and all this that and the third and that for you to, to, to be led down that road in other words in thinking then you have to say well if it's false in one then it's false in all. We don't have no flying angels. We don't have no, no, no resurrection. We don't have anything. My thing is people that our ancient history has always been there to tell us the truth. But we always have those when images like this pop up, we always have those that rush in and say, oh no, it's not like this song. And I mean, they usually put their credentials on the line to tell you this too. 
um, yeah, this is um, we found this to be soccer, and this this is the history of the soccer, and this, that, and the third. Well, why are they playing soccer in a monkey suit? And chickens and and birds on their head. And why would they be doing all of that? These people are describing their genetic being. Now that didn't took two two um two Mayan um pieces of um artifact and then described you that they're describing their ape and African origins and how they genetically are altering themselves. The the famous tomb of Lord Bacall lid the lid and now this and, and there's more if you look at it for what it truly is. And there's other stuff in here too, people, that, that can be seen. But I just like taking things that are right there in your face and you look at them. Look at the hands. Look at the skin tones being changed and altered. And look at the creatures. All you have to do is follow the, cra the, the, the trail of the creatures and show you how it's being changed. My name is Jerome Wright, and I think that I done burnt, beat this hour up. And um, yes, I have. But anyway, I'm going to get out of here with this. And, and just look at this, people. And look closely at everything that you see there. And you will start to see faces of apes and serpents. And you will even see the eyes in there. And you will start to see things form, you late. That shows you that there's an extraction of what? Our ape and African origins. There's an extraction of those genes which we evolved from. And it comes from the genetic change of who we are. This is why the Mayan people to this day are the well, the descendants or well not should I say descendants? Yeah, the descendants of the Mayan people, those that are, are genetically related to these people look so dramatically different today thanks to what they done back then they changed themselves from looking the darker version to the lighter versions that exist today and that goes for everybody everybody and all continents this is what this is all about look at how they went from their darkest state to becoming to their lightest state look at it just look and then finally with the blue hair the blonde eyes the red hair the green eyes, the gray eyes. It's because there was an intervention using animals that calls for all of this. My name is Jerome Wright, and um, I'm going to get away from this video. And um, okay, people, you be the judge.